morning. Happy Pentecost Sunday. Happy Pentecost Sunday. <laughs> happy birthday, Christian Church. Right. Um, we're happy to worship with all of you today. We'll give everyone kind of a minute to gather in. Welcome. Happy to see you here. We're glad everyone can gather in together as we celebrate the birth of the church. Um, I've had a nice time looking at some of the pictures that have been posted. It's not too late. Feel free to still add your photo in there. Um, since we can't be together in person, it's nice to kind of see each other again in that way. So we'd love to get some more pictures added to our group um, as we celebrate being the church together, even though we're apart. And this morning, my mom has a greeting to bring all of you as well. Good morning. Okay, my encouragement for today um, from my devotions from Come Away My Beloved with Francis J. Roberts, it was called Do Not Be Dormant. And the verse was Isaiah 40, 31, which most of us are familiar with. But those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And I guess usually when I heard that verse, I was thinking about, you know, the Lord strengthening us and, and all that stuff. But really, God wants us to be active in doing his ministry in our lives. And he wants to lead you with his Holy Spirit. And so you have to be careful not to be too tied up with things in your life um, so that you would miss the quiet prompting of the Holy Spirit. He does not want us to be dormant or to be slothful or to fall asleep in our spirituality. He doesn't want us to step out ahead of his spirit either. He wants to guide us through it. And so um, as you go out this week, move out and move on and let God guide you with his Holy Spirit and love to you all and happy Pentecost Sunday. Celebrate the Holy Spirit with us. Have a great week. Um, just a couple announcements today, not too many. Uh, the first is um, just a reminder to keep praying. We talked about praying constantly last week, and we're trying to spread hope by um, physically walking through our neighborhoods and praying for our neighbors as we're out there. So I encourage you to keep doing that. I got a couple more reports sent to me this week um, of some prayer outs. So thank you for participating in that if you've done that already. And if not, um, you know, it's not too late. Keep keep getting out there and let me know where you've walked. Um, we are still looking for volunteers that are available to help us mow the church lawn. So if you're um, able to do that, free to do that, please let us know and we'll get you added to the rotation. And we're only responsible for every other month. So um, you get breaks in there and the more people that do it the uh further apart all of those and june is our turns turn. come up and june is our turn so we're about to start in on our um responsible month for that so um, be sure you get that in we are doing sunday school so if you haven't been participating in that i encourage you to jump in uh, we do that at 9 a.m via zoom thank you jim for leading that we appreciate you and I um, just, I guess one last reminder, the book study that Kim is leading, uh, it's not too late to jump in. She'd ordered a couple extra books and they haven't had their first session yet. So if you're interested, reach out to Kim right away uh, and she'll get you hooked up on that and give you the details, ladies. <laughs> um, next, I'll do our scripture reading. And we're in the book of Acts today since it's Pentecost Sunday. So turn with me to Acts chapter one, please. I'll give you a minute to get there. We're looking at Acts chapter 1, and hopefully this will sound familiar because we're going to kind of review um, some of the stuff that we talked about last week. <clears throat> so we're going to read Acts chapter 1, starting at verse 3. Af <clears throat> After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. 
Then they gathered around him and asked, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. <laughs> After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men, dressed in white, stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand there looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. <clears throat> All right. Um, prayer time. And there are a few prayer requests that uh, I want to highlight today. Uh, within our group, um, there's a couple serious ones. Casey, um, her boyfriend, Elliot, was shot and passed away this week. So we want to keep Casey and Elliot's family in our prayers as they're um, grieving and going through all of that. We also want to lift up Donna's uh, brother Gary as he's in the hospital still with pneumonia um, and having a really hard time. Um, Angie's mom is, um, some tests came back and it was determined that she's precancerous. So we want to pray for her and for the doctors as they kind of figure out next steps um, to help her out. Uh, and then kind of thinking a little more broadly, obviously there's been a lot going on across our country this week. Um, Kenosha had a number of shootings this week, so I think the tension and the stress of everything is just being felt everywhere, so we want to lift that up. But also um, we want to pray and address the racism that is built into the fabric of our country. Um, racism is a sin and so we want to repent of any part that we play in it and we want to um, pray that the Lord will help us to do our part too to um, tear down any inequality around us and the structures that are um, biased in our favor. Uh, we also want to pray for everyone that's um, in the front lines or near all of these protests or riots that are going on. Um, Obviously, people's safety is at risk, and so we want to be praying for that. Um, I had asked for prayer for my close friend, Corey, a few weeks ago because she had gone to New York as a nurse to help out during the pandemic. And now um, there's unrest and violence happening right by her hospital and her hotel. So um, it's affecting people that are going out and also people that are kind of just living in those areas. So we want to keep everyone's safety in mind. Um, as everything's going on. We also um, want to continue to pray for everyone impacted by the pandemic. Uh, this hasn't ended magically just because other stuff has flared up and actually because of the massive numbers of people that are out, um, there's likely to be an increase too in, in cases from that. So we don't want to forget that either as we're um, thinking about everything else. So please bow your heads with me as we pray. <clears throat> Dear Lord, this has been a hard week uh, for our country, especially. Um, we've seen the heartbreak as um, George Floyd was uh, murdered, Lord, and we grieve with his family and um, really with the black community as they have felt that extra deeply. And um, it kind of just exposes once again this racism that's all around us, Lord. I pray that. Um, you forgive us for the racism that we've taken part in and um, open up our hearts to see the, the areas where we've been complicit or um, actively engaged in it, Lord, and that you help us to root all of that out. Help us to be willing to listen when people tell us um, that there's inequality or there's pain and not to just be dismissive because we haven't personally felt it, Lord. Um, help us to be able to find the right steps to take so that we can have actions to go with our words and our prayers, Lord. I pray also for the safety um, and the health of everyone that's out um, because of these protests that are taking place, Lord. A lot of violence has flared up because of that, and so um, we pray that you'll be in those situations and help to keep people safe, Lord. 
We also lift up everyone um, impacted by the pandemic that's still going on. Kenosha County is still seeing increasing numbers, Lord, and, and around the country that's still a, a problem. So we pray that people will continue to use wisdom and take the right safety precautions as they're going kind of back out to um, their jobs and kind of just having fun now that the weather's getting nice and it's been dragging on, Lord. I pray that um, you'll help people to keep making wise choices and to stay safe. We also pray um, for the needs within our, our local church here, Lord. Um, Casey shared the news about her boyfriend, Elliot, and we grieve with her and with his family. And um, we pray for your comfort for all of them. Um, <clears throat> and uh, we just mourn that that has happened here, Lord. We also pray... Uh, for Donna's brother, Gary, that the doctors will be able to treat his pneumonia and he'll recover quickly, Lord. We pray for um, Angie's mom as the doctors are trying to figure out uh, what to do now that um, they have left some polyps and have discovered their precancerous, Lord, that they'll um, determine the right course of action and treatment for her. We lift up all of the ongoing physical requests within our, our group as well, Lord. Um, we pray for your healing touch. And we pray for those we know that don't know you. Um, obviously, the, there's a lot of needs around us, but um, the, the people around us that don't know you are at the top of our hearts, Lord. And it's such an urgent need. We're told um, in the Bible to always be ready because we don't get to know when you're coming back. And part of that is serving as your witnesses in our community and helping more and more people to join your family and your kingdom, Lord. And so we pray for those we know that don't know you, that we can be used by you to help to direct them towards you, Lord, that they can feel your love through us. We pray for you to pour out your spirit on us, Lord, today as we celebrate the Pentecost when you sent your spirit all those years ago. Um, help us to be empowered as your witnesses um, in our words and our deeds. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Good morning. We want to welcome you this morning on uh, this uh, Pentecost Sunday. Uh, it's already been a good morning. We had a great Sunday school class this morning <coughs> that, uh, that we enjoyed. Um, and today... Um, I want to invite you, if you have your Bibles, to turn to the book of Numbers as we get started this morning. Uh, the book of Numbers. Uh, <clears throat> now, most people, if you think, uh, you know, I need some inspiration, I need some encouragement, I'm going to go to the Scripture, uh, you don't think, I'm going to go to the book of Numbers. Uh, that is not one of those popular books uh, by reputation. Uh, it does include some ancient census materials. Uh, and so uh, it, it has kind of a bad reputation, but there are some good things in Numbers. And uh, today we're going to look at a story uh, that begins uh, in the desert. Uh, we're going to pick up the story where the Israelites uh, have been uh, led out of Egypt. You know, the whole story of the ten plagues and the Passover and, and uh, Moses leading uh, uh, Israel through the Red Sea when God split the Red Sea. And uh, so now they're... Uh, they've come to Mount Sinai, and, and they've got, you know, the Ten Commandments type stuff. Um, and, they're, uh, and, and God has been feeding them with manna, uh, this miraculous uh, kind of bread from heaven that they've been eating. Um, but all is not well. Um, so I want to read, uh, to start with, verses 4 through 6 of uh, Numbers 11. And that will just kind of get us started. Verses 4 through 6. The rabble with them began to crave other food. And again the Israelites started wailing and said, If only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we ate in Egypt at no cost. Also the cucumbers, melons, leeks, onions, and garlic. But now we've lost our appetite. We never have anything but this manna. Uh, and so they've begun to complain. They, they have already forgotten that in Egypt they were slaves uh, and, you know, the food wasn't as good as they remember it being. And God has been sustaining them with this gift from heaven, this manna, and they're complaining about it because that's all they get, you know, and so they want this other stuff. And so Moses 
himself gets upset. Now he's, he's kind of mad because they're mad. And so he complains to God that the task is too hard. Uh, he tells God, you know, you've got all of these people and I'm supposed to lead them through a desert and there's not enough food. How am I supposed to take care of these people? And so Moses complains to God about his situation. Well, God goes ahead and tells Moses, um, among other things, that he needs to delegate the work. And he instructs Moses to gather 70 elders and leaders uh, that can kind of help share the load. Uh, and so uh, that is part of God's solution. And I want to now turn uh, to verse 24 and begin reading there. Uh, Numbers 11, verse 24. Uh, and I'll just give you a moment to find that. Numbers 11, verse 24. So Moses went out and told the people what the Lord had said. He brought together 70 of their elders and had them stand around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke with him. And he took some of the power of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. Uh, when the spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but did not do so again. So... <clears throat> Uh, in response to God telling him to sue, choose 70 elders, uh, he did so. Um, and then the spirit that was on Moses um, went and, and landed on those 70 people that, uh, that Moses had chosen. Um, I want to point out that the spirit is not a limited power source. Uh, this did not diminish the spirit that was on Moses. So, you know, like Moses has the spirit... Now God's going to divide that among 70, so everybody has one seventieth of the Spirit. Uh, that's not the way it works. Um, uh, the Spirit is an infinite source. Uh, the biblical scholars, Kylan Dalich, who wrote a whole Old Testament commentary series uh, on the Old Testament, um, they said this, The Spirit of God is not something material, which is diminished by being divided, but resembles a flame of fire, which does not decrease in intensity, but increases rather by extension. So my mind, when I read that, uh, goes to our Christmas Eve service at church. Uh, those of you who have taken part, you, uh, you recall that uh, as people arrive, we give them all an unlit candle. And then near the end of the service, uh, we begin with one lit candle, and, uh, and we light one of the other person's candles, and then they light someone's candles, and then both of them light someone's candles, and pretty soon, everyone in the church has a candle lit. Um, and so uh, uh, the original candle is not lit less. It is not burning smaller because of all these other flames. And that's what Kylan Dalek's saying the Spirit of God is like. Uh, when the Spirit of God that Moses had uh, was distributed to the other 70, uh, it didn't take away from what Moses had. Another thing I want to point out is it says that they were prophesying. Um, and we talked about that in Sunday school this morning, that prophesying, uh, while it is commonly thought about as being foretelling or telling the future, um, it really means forth telling, uh, or as Jim said this morning, telling forth. Um, now, it's often related to the future because... Um, a lot of what they proclaimed was God talking about what he was going to do in the future. You see, it wasn't because they were good predictors. It wasn't because the prophets were futurists. It wasn't because they had some kind of a magic crystal ball that they could gaze into and see what was going to happen next. It's because God said, I'm going to do this, or I'm going to do that, or this is going to happen, because that's what God was going to do. So like, if I say to you, uh, I'm going to get up from this chair and walk into the other room, and then I do so. You say, oh, he's a prophet. He could see the future. Well, it wasn't because I could see the future. It's because I made a decision about what I was going to do, and, and I told you about it. Now, sometimes I can tell you what I'm going to do tomorrow or the next day, and it ends up not happening. But when God says he's going to do something the next day or the next 100 years or the next 1,000 years, um, there's nothing that can stop him. Uh, if God says it, it's going to happen. Uh, and so... Uh, prophesying is really proclaiming uh, praise for God. Uh, as the Amplified Bible puts it here, uh, it says, 
they were sounding forth the praises of God and declaring his will. Uh, and so they weren't just, you know, telling the future. They were proclaiming the truth about God. They must have uh, shared some stories uh, about God's faithfulness in the past, including giving them manna, including bringing them through the Red Sea, including the ten plagues and the Passover and all of that, would have all been part of what, uh, what they were proclaiming, uh, his past faithfulness. Part of the point was morale building. Uh, they were frustrated and complaining about their situation, and they were being reminded about God's faithfulness in the past. Uh, also in Sunday school this morning, uh, we read the passage that said that uh, we should not treat prophecies with contempt. Uh, and so um, that's applicable. Uh, this idea of being a prophet or prophesying uh, is not telling the future. It's proclaiming uh, God's faithfulness. It's praising God. It's proclaiming uh, God's will, which, of course, often involves the future. So even as a preacher, when I proclaim to you uh, that, you know, uh, we have eternal life promised um, uh, to the believers, when I say that, I'm prophesying. Not because I'm telling the future, but because I'm proclaiming God's will. Uh, so prophesying, uh, besides the value of the praise, besides the value of the content of the message they were giving, uh, this was important at this time in our Moses story because it was a sign of God's activity. Uh, if Moses had just said, I'm going to appoint these 70 people to, to help lead you, uh, there might have been some resistance. There might have been some, well, what makes them our leader? You know, they, they can't be the boss over me. Uh, we didn't elect them. Uh, but by God's spirit coming on them, they were able to see that this was God at work, that God was behind this. It was kind of a, a confirmation that Moses was acting according to God. Uh, well, I want to move on now uh, to verse 26. Numbers 11, verse 26, and I'm going to read 26 and 27. However, two men, whose names were Eldad and Medad, had remained in the camp. They were listed among the elders, but did not go out to the tent. Yet the Spirit also rested on them, and they prophesied in the camp. A young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. So these two guys were absent. Moses had called these 70 elders to gather around the tent, and they gathered. But it turns out two of them were missing. Um, <clears throat> and by the way, for you list makers out there, um, you join the company here because apparently the 70 had been written on a list. Uh, there was a list of these 70 elders. Uh, Eldad and Medad were on that list, but they hadn't come to the tent. So they were back in another place. But the same thing happened to them. Even though they weren't at the tent, where they were, the Spirit came on them and they began to prophesy. This was further proof uh, that the Spirit was doing this. The Spirit was not bound uh, by being at the tent. This wasn't like a magic act that Moses was doing. It wasn't an illusion. Uh, the Spirit was doing this, and that's why it was able to be on these two. So further proof that this is God activity, that God was at work. Well, I want to read 28 and 29 now. Numbers 11, 28 and 29. Uh, Joshua, son of Nun, who had been Moses' aide since youth, spoke up and said, Moses, my Lord, stop them. But Moses replied, Are you jealous for my sake? I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. Uh, then Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. Um, so loyal Joshua. He's been... Uh, Moses' right-hand man uh, since his youth. Uh, he's very loyal to Moses, and he wants to protect Moses. Uh, in his mind, uh, these guys uh, are taking away from Moses' authority. They are taking away from uh, Moses as the supreme leader. They're taking away from uh, you know, Moses being the head honcho if they're doing what he's doing. Uh, and so he, they were, he was trying to protect Moses. Uh, and, and keep Moses glorified as the, as the top dog. Uh, but Moses, uh, unlike Joshua, wasn't interested in glorifying Moses. Moses was interested in glorifying God. He didn't mind uh, sharing this gift of the Spirit. He didn't mind sharing this gift of prophecy. Uh, in his mind, um, it was a good thing. In fact, he says, and I want to say it again, I read it a minute ago, 
Moses said, I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. Uh, and so Moses uh, says, not only uh, do I, am I glad that these two guys, along with the, you know, part of the 70, I'm not only glad that they have the spirit, I wish that all the Lord's people had the spirit. I wish he would put his spirit on all of them and that they would all prophesy. Uh, that was a dream for Moses. Uh, you know, we could talk about what are your dreams. Well, for Moses, it was his dream that all the Lord's people would have the spirit. Now, this was probably taking place, the, there's, you know, not exact agreement, but there's general consensus, uh, about 1400 to 1500 BC. So that's like 3400 to 3500 years ago. Um, well, uh, after that time, uh, maybe five or 600 years later, uh, the prophet Joel arrives on the scene. And I want to read Joel chapter 2, uh, verses uh, 28 and 29. <clears throat> Joel is one of those uh, little books that's harder to find. Uh, Joel chapter 2, verses 28 and 29. If you're using one of our church's worship Bibles, page 742, or 743. Uh, and this, by the way, is titled in my, in my NIV, The Day of the Lord, which, by coincidence, um, was the title of one of the sections we covered in 1 uh, Thessalonians today in Sunday School. Uh, see, that's Sunday school reference number three. If you're missing Sunday school, you really ought to get in on it. Uh, Nine o'clock on Sundays via Zoom. Um, all right, Joel 28 and 29. Uh, and afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And so... 500, 600 years later, after Moses had wished for it, God reveals to the prophet Joel that that's the plan, that he is going to pour out his spirit on all the people. Uh, Joel is saying that God is going to make Moses' wish come true. Now I want to jump forward another thousand years, approximately, and takes us back to the book of Acts, uh, Acts chapter 1. Uh, verses 3 through 11 that Pastor Chelsea read for us already, and so I hope that you were uh, uh, with us when she read that. She talked about the idea that uh, about 40 days after the resurrection, Jesus met with the disciples and, and ascended into heaven, and as he did so, he gave them these instructions. And part of the instructions were to wait. And Pastor Chelsea talked about that in her sermon last week. Uh, we are supposed to, they were supposed to wait for the Spirit, and, and they did. Uh, and it turned out that it was a 10-day wait. Uh, and um, I want to read now what happened 10 days later, which makes it 50 days uh, after uh, <clears throat> the resurrection. Uh, <clears throat> it's in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 to 18. So a longer passage this time. Um, <clears throat> Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 18. When the day of Pentecost came, which means it was 50 days after, at the time, after Passover, now it's after Easter, um, they were all together in one place. They were waiting like Jesus had told them to. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. And that is why we encouraged everyone on Pentecost Sunday to wear red. It symbolizes the fire that came down. Um, so that's the purpose for that. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this, a, sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one 
heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, and then he quotes Joel, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. And so here we have, uh, in Acts chapter 2, Moses' wish comes true. Joel's prophecy comes true. Now, it took uh, 1,400 years from the time that Moses wished for it until the time that it came true. Now, there's probably a sermon right there uh, about the duration of that particular wait, uh, but we don't have time for that sermon today. Uh, another thing I want to mention uh, is that in this passage, uh, we see that, that this spirit event was a unifying event. Um, notice um, that uh, there were these people from, quote-unquote, all nations under heaven, and there was a list of a bunch of them. Um, a lot of them were kind of natural enemies. A lot of them didn't ordinarily get along, and there was a lot of prejudice and racism <laughs> that was going on at that time among some of those people groups. Um, and the Spirit brought them together. It was a spirit of unity. Uh, and so, um, you know, as Pastor Chelsea talked about at prayer time, um, the racism that still exists in our country today, within the Christian faith, that ought never be true, and we ought to be agents of bringing healing and restoration and unity uh, through the Spirit. It was part of what the Spirit does. Uh, another thing I want to mention is the, uh, a little bit of a theology Bible lesson here now. Um, the idea of typology. Uh, typology is a, a biblical concept uh, in which something happens at, at one level and it becomes a symbol or a representative or a teaching tool of, of something at a different higher level, something more dramatic. And so, for example... Uh, Moses and Israel being led out of Egypt becomes a type, part of the typology of Jesus leading people out of sin and the consequences of sin and death. Uh, and so that's a typology. The idea of the Passover lamb. There's a lamb that has to be slaughtered. Jesus becomes the Passover lamb and, and died for us. And that, that is part of the typology where something happens at one level. Isaiah, uh, you know, uh, saying that, you know, the, the maiden is going to give birth to a son. And, and, you know, it's his son. But it's also Jesus. Uh, you know, God's people gives birth to a son. Uh, that is all considered typology. And this story today is part of that Old Testament typology. Uh, the Spirit coming on the 70 and them prophesying, them proclaiming, uh, the glory of God and God's will was a type of what was going to happen on Pentecost Sunday. 
uh, when the Spirit came on all God's people and they began to, to prophesy. So with the fulfillment of Moses' wish, the Christian church was born. Uh, they, were, they had been told to wait uh, until the Spirit came. Uh, the Spirit came. Uh, now the waiting is over. Now they are supposed to become God's prophets, and they are supposed to be his witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and then to the ends of the earth. Uh, and so it's all part of this uh, 50 days after Easter. It's why today is Pentecost Sunday, and it's why we celebrate um, that 50 days after the resurrection, the Holy Spirit rested not just on the leaders, but on all God's people. And uh, because they had gathered as he had uh, instructed them to. Well, last week, um, Pastor Chelsea talked about the command to wait uh, and that that is over. And, and part of that included that they would be my witnesses. Um, that remains uh, our mission. It remains a large part of our purpose. That is, we are to witness, to tell God's story, uh, to praise him, to tell forth his will. Uh, remember, that's, that's the real meaning of prophesy. We weren't all called to predict the future. That's not what that means when it says we are to prophesy. We are to proclaim God's will. We are to proclaim his glory. Uh, as we celebrate this day, let's remember that Pentecost Sunday was not an afterthought. It was not something that just happened. It was part of God's long-term plan. Moses had wished for it 3,400 years before it happened. Uh, and because of the way the biblical typology works, um, uh, we can see looking back uh, that it had been planned all along. God was symbolizing and representing what was going to happen someday way back when he did what he did with Moses. Uh, and, and as believers who can receive the Spirit and who do receive the Spirit, uh, we all ought to become prophets. Uh, so let's remember that. Let's go out and be his witnesses. So let's go out and be his prophets, not just the pastors, uh, not just the Sunday school teachers, but all of us need to go out and be his prophets. And let's remember that as we celebrate Pentecost Sunday, as we celebrate the birthday of the church, let's remember this is our mission. Happy birthday, Christian church. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the gift of the Spirit. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for the way you work throughout history. Uh, we ask you, Lord, for continued patience as we still wait for some of the things that we dream for, some of the things that you promised to take place. Uh, but, Lord, let us bask in what has taken place. Uh, Moses, Lord, uh, dreamed of the day uh, when your spirit would come on all of God's people. And, and it happened uh, on Pentecost Sunday. And it's still happening, Lord. You still give your spirit to your people and, uh, Lord, part of that, the purpose of that uh, is that we would have the power to be your prophets, that we would have your power to be your witnesses, that is, uh, in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. That means, Lord, in Kenosha, Wisconsin, uh, in Flushing, Michigan, uh, in, uh, in Florida, Lord, it, wherever we are, uh, we are to be your prophets. And your spirit is not bound uh, by nationality, by race. It is for all people. So help us, Lord, to be a unifying force uh, as your spirit expands the church. We ask these things in your name. Amen. And may God bless you as you depart to be his people and be his prophets uh, for the next week and beyond. Thank you for being with us this morning.